India and the U.S. have had a bilateral talks yesterday. Very important things have emerged from the talk. With me is General Kulkarni. General Kulkarni, three, four points which have emerged. One, that the India and the U.S. will fast-track cooperation in technology. It will enable co-production of equipment used for air combat, intelligence gathering, surveillance, reconnaissance, and undersea domain. It has also come out that we will be discussing specific proposals. The U.S. has said we will be discussing specific proposals provided by India to access cutting-edge technology. The two sides have also agreed to have a kind of a new agreement or a new discussion which will pave the way for transfer of technology, sharing of technology between the two companies of the two countries. These are called the Security Supply Agreement and the Reciprocal Supply Agreement. General Kulkani, there are many more things in it I could go on, but I'll first seek your opinion on these matters. How do you see the India-U.S. bilateral which happened in New Delhi on the June 5th? Thank you, Ajay. I think at the very outset, I see it as a fantastic bilateral agreements that are taking place between U.S. and India. Obviously, for this, for a long time, I would rather, if I go back uh, to those four foundational agreements, 2002, 2016, 18, 20, called by various names, the GSOMIA, LEMOA, you know, Comcast, uh, Baker, all of these allowed India and the U.S. to come very, very close. And therefore, the visit itself has been, and, and I would look at it this way, that uh, two visits are very close to one another, coming from Secretary of Defense, himself, four-star general, that is, who understands so much better. And uh, after the Prime Minister of ours has met uh, the President of the United States at Hiroshima, followed again by the Prime Minister's visit to Washington, which is expected to be a huge, everyone's looking forward to, and the way everyone's kind of love and affection that's taking place between the U.S. and the Indian leadership, I think that would hold a fantastic, fantastic future for both the countries. Having said that, all these agreements that we see that is coming up, all these cooperations, whether they are ranging from technology to uh, defense procurements to inch sharing to the assessment capabilities to identify threats, well, I see them all as something which tendons India, it also strengthens the United States because we are not piggyback on anybody. We are not allies of anybody. We are partners and partners in which there is tremendous amount of trust that is taking place between the two countries. Not just the Indo-Pacific, but also various agreements that are taking place. And I would look at it this way, that the United States, great support and assistance to India, whether it is in terms of insharing, reconnaissance, surveillance, and even the drone that came to us as on lease to be able to see that MQ-9B, which helped in gathering. Also, the helicopters that came, Chinooks, you have Apache, you had the transport helicopter, or aircraft, fixed wing aircraft, which helped in mobilization when things went wrong with China in Eastern Ladakh. All of these agreements, all these kind of measures that have taken place, all these kind of rapport between the United States and India that is taking place, I think it works out good for peace and stability. Not always to be able to say we are anti-China. These are not anti-China, but it is to check China primarily because assertiveness by China, irrespective of whatever China might say, it does not follow, it doesn't walk the talk. And therefore, in that context, the way we are seeing the assertiveness, the expansionism, the aggressiveness being exhibited by China in the Indo-Pacific and also in the Eastern Ladakh and in Arunachal Pradesh, in that context, the relationship that is developing between India and USA, I find that there's tremendous amount of goodwill, good scope, peace and stability that will prevail in the region and also that we are beneficiaries of uh, the technology that U.S., which otherwise is very, very critical technology, which will be transferred to India, I think I look at it as a, in a very, very positive way. Yeah. Chan Kulkarni, we'll move on to the specifics. Uh, the statement yesterday spoke about conclusion of a roadmap for defense industrial cooperation. Now, for our listeners, to put it in context, we are in talks with General Electric to make engines in India for the fighter jet stages and also to procure 30 MQ-9B armed drones, famously called the Predators. General Krukani, how do you see this conclusion of the Defense Industrial Cooperation? The entire 350 of our own aircrafts, which are uh, going to be equipped with the engines, I understand that the Prime Minister's visit to the United States would finally lead to signing of this agreement in which we'll have the uh, aircraft uh, engines coming to us. So all 350 stages being equipped with this kind of aircraft will so definitely, and nothing better than it being manufactured in India or in collaboration with uh, America. Not just that. Let's say the MQ-9B, which is the Sea Guardian, there are 30 of them coming, a $3 billion contract being signed, in which there are 10 for the Navy, 10 for the Air Force, and 10 for the Army. 
with just see the kind of uh, range, 482 kilometers of range, uh, be able to serve an area of about 1900 square kilometers, 35 hours of flying capability, remotely controlled, all these kind of capabilities obviously put us to be able to deter. I would only use the word debtor. I'm not using any other thing, neither am I uh, calling or uh, qualifying it by any other debtor, but definitely helps us to be able to reach and this kind of, and even the exercises that we do with uh, America, we have almost done six of these exercises in the last about eight months, interoperability, compatibility, understanding each other, uh, as even uh, soldiers that we operate with one another, the equipment that we operate with one another, the kind of, uh, as I was talking about the foundational agreement, the LEMOA agreement that are taking place, so we find logistic exchange, the ability to be able to, uh, uh, you know, use of uh, facilities, to assist them in for refueling, maybe in Port Blair also, that can, can uh, be able to uh, uh, assist in uh, kind of ship-to-ship -ship refueling that can take place on the high seas. All this with a view to ensure that there are sea lines of communication which are kept open. And that is where the rule of law must prevail and nobody must be able to at least be uh, and nothing better than India who are operating with America in the Indo-Pacific and also America looking at India as a solid partner in the Indian Ocean region. Jan Kulkarni, we will move on. I will keep yourself, you restricted to the, so far to the industry part. One, the India-US will also operationalize an Indo-US defense acceleration ecosystem on the 21st of June. That is one day before Prime Minister Modi is there in the US. Also, the two sides again discussed two very important aspects the discussion in advanced domains of defense, artificial intelligence, and defense space. A specific subgroup met in India on the May 22nd. Uh, Mr. Rajnath Singh and uh, the Secretary of U.S. Uh, Lloyd Austin also mentioned this specifically yesterday. General Kukrani, these two things, the, the Indo India-U.S. defense acceleration ecosystem and the talk of the defense artificial and defense space. Please place in context for our listeners, please. You know, uh, Ajay, you know, a little, if I go back, you know, the, uh, when uh, our National Security Advisor, Mr. Doval, was there sometime around the 31st of January uh, this year, we had that initiative on critical and emerging technologies between the two countries. Now, that laid the foundation that, yes, between the two countries, there's so much to, uh, to be done, whether it is maritime security architecture in the Iowa, whether it is, uh, you know, commitment of the assets in the uh, theater are concerned or mission ready forces that are required to be done or the defense technology and trade initiatives which were there which were already in place which has to be taken forward to so I look at it from the point of view of all these agreements which are there wherein you find that transfer of technology absorption of technology being able to make India Atmanirbhar when we are talking about Atmanirbhar we are looking at it actually speaking we are not piggyback on anyone we are not dependent on charity of anyone we are st using our resources and we are also strengthening what we have as our real core uh, uh, strength that we have that is be able to absorb the technology in that context when these critical technologies come to us we have our defense corridors now in place where the things can be developed we have the uh, complete like you said the GE engines which will be coming for the Tejas aircraft being manufactured into India the subsequent drone technologies that are to be uh, coming into India you find whole kind of range of technologies that will be there in communication, in, in sharing, in reconnaissance, in surveillance, all of it, this is all with a view to ensure that yes, capacity building takes time, but until and unless we are fully equipped with the kind of modernized uh, and interoperability between the two countries, we, there's not likelihood of any deterrence that can be caused. And we as India are ready to accept it and take on that additional role to be able to ensure that peace and tranquility prevails in the Indo-Pacific region. Thank you for speaking to us, General Kulkarni. It was an important subject of India-U.S. bilateral relations. The meeting held yesterday spoke about multitude of issues, including industrial cooperation, space cooperation, and defense cooperation. Thank you for speaking to us, sir. Thank you.